Dublin and you can't come to this church since I understand because you can't come here every day. But what happens before the word? The real deal. There's nothing of what goes on in the word. We don't capture what happens before. The glory. You've got to come in early. We come in half past five, half past twelve. We start the discipleship. You have to come. Put up your hands that those were the discipleship class this morning, earlier today. I mean, we we get the starter there, and that's a very big starter, <laughs> correct? And the glory comes in the discipleship. So you have to come to the discipleship because then that glory comes here with us, and then we've already started to saturate the ground. But the prophecy falls. The miracles come. The demonstration of power comes. The word comes. The healing comes. The glory comes. There's a transfiguration that happens in the glory. Your heart is changed. The old man, the old no man must go. The old Sharon must come forward. The new Sharon, the old Sharon must go. The new man in Christ must come forward. And in the glory, we have to let go of the old. Amen. Hallelujah. So, I want to encourage you that online. If you are sitting in this KwaZulu Natal, you've got to come here. Because what you're seeing online, yes, the word is powerful because the Holy Spirit is a great preacher. But, come for the whole thing. So, yes, sure, if you're a great time, it's hard to come every week. But if you are here in our city, and you can come. You have to come every week, okay? So if you if you came in late and you haven't had your communion online, do your communion now, okay? Get ready. You we are in the open heaven. The portal is open. The church, the ecclesia, is the one place in the earth where the heaven is open. It's the place where you can enter God. In your house where you build an altar is where you enter. So when you enter heaven, in this presence, it is a presence where you will spend eternity. We want to be in the presence of heaven. Because in that presence there's healing. In that presence there's wholeness. In that presence, the enemy cannot come and oppress you. Because it's a glory shield around you. Amen? Hallelujah. So we welcome our people online and we welcome our visitor here today. Glory to God. My old sister. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we give God praise, glory, and honor. Whatever strategy the enemy has set against you has been somersaulted as you walk into the door. Wow. According to Psalms 18, the trap and the snare that they set against you is a trap and the snare that the enemy is falling to that the Lord is going to turn around. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. That's what I see that the Lord is telling me again. It's been tremendous, tremendous war. You've been marching in a war zone. And the Lord said, I'm taking you out of the war zone. And I'm taking you in now to be a warrior in my army. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God is saying that you are the breaker. So we welcome to the guys online. We thank you for connecting the King's House of Prayer. This is your father's house. I'm going to welcome uh, Trisha Patel. She has the word from the Lord today. Praise God that I can enjoy the glory. And, um, uh, you know, Holy Spirit is the revelator. So we thank God. And yesterday afternoon, um, the, Holy, the Lord gave me this word. And I was like, I was shocked. I was overwhelmed. Because that meant that I had to completely change the word that I was going to share today and share the, what the Lord said. And I said, Lord, I won't share unless you give me the word to share for today. So I do believe that this is a word that God has given me for such a time as this. So we give God glory and honor. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. We thank you that we decrease and He increases. And I just sense the glory of the Lord is so thick here. So He's going to do all the work. The Holy Spirit is the best preacher. I just want to honor my, my spiritual dad, Apostle Maldonado, my mom. Um, Prophet Sharon, which a lot of the gifts that I carry the double of. When I used to serve and I used to make the tea and the biscuits for my mom, I used to say, Elisha, got the mantle, Lord. Just give me that mantle, Lord. You know, it, 
I'll serve because I know that Elisha got the double. And that was what, uh, the word that I used to cry and I used to say to the Lord. And truly the Lord has done that because I have seen such an acceleration in my life. That every day, it feels like a thousand days with the Lord because of the acceleration that I received from Him. So just give glory and honor to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Honor to my husband and my children that sacrificially served me and allowed me to do what I've done. And just honor to my dad that's sitting here. Daddy, can you stand? Can we, can we just help Dad stand? Um, the Lord reminded me when we were in the service today that I was in a very, very serious bad accident when I was little. And I was not supposed to survive from the accident. But my dad, he, he actually, he was injured as well in the accident. But he got up, uh, his leg was uh, damaged in the accident, he couldn't walk. But he got up and he went to go and look for my sister and myself. I think I was three years old and my sister must have been six months old. But he went to go and look for us before. We don't know how come. He had a supernatural strength because he shouldn't have been walking. But he went during the accident that I was in when I was little to look for me. And he saved my sister and I. And I know the Lord saved us that day because we were not supposed to be here. We were separated. We went to different hospitals. And I looked like I was just stitched up all over my face. And I was in a very bad condition. But I just, the Lord reminded me that the enemy's plans shall not stop what the God has planned and ordained. Can I have seen? And this is keep my dad around the Lord. And the Lord reminded me of the accident that I was in when I was little. And I just want to say, I just want to give daddy that honor because I remember that he, he also went and fetched us from the, where we were. So, amen, glory to God. So, whatever the enemy has said against you, church, let's catch that revelation, right? Because the word of God says, they shall be preach of the word. But we must be like the Bereans, right? Go and get the word. But we need to demonstrate the word. Because we're not going to go in full with word and then go out with no demonstration. The week before that, we did the royal decree. Do you remember? And we said we're going to set this royal decree. How many of you have done that royal decree? Because I've done mine. And the day I finished my royal decree, mine, it was done. Let me just say it. So if you haven't done it, go home. Do a royal decree, yeah. put that decree up. Don't delay because obedience is a key. Amen. And it opens many doors. So Ephesians 1, 22, 23 says, God has put all things under the authority of Christ, has made him head over all things for the benefit of, of what? The, the church. Amen. And the church is his body. It is made full and Complete. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. So what we do know, church, is that we're not fighting against an enemy that has that is, is, is worn. We're fighting against the enemy that has been defeated. Amen. And that is the word that declares wow. that God is, Christ is under the authority of all things of the benefit of the church. He, he has made full and complete of Christ who fills all things everywhere itself, possessing everything. So when you come into that revelation, before I go into the depth of the word, it is a bit deep. Promise me you're not going to sleep. Take out your phone. Take the notes. Because I need you to go back home and I need you to catch the revelation. Because this is the thing. That when I come to preach, I say it's a spirit thing. Yes. You're not going to get it in the flesh. You know what the flesh must do? I don't want to. I'm outside. It must die. Yes. The flesh Amen. must be crucified. Self has to go. Yes. Because let me just say it again. What does that mean? The flesh must die. Amen. Yes. Okay. It must be crucified. We must be spirit and spirit loving. Because that's how we're going to catch this word. So you've got your notes, you've got your Bibles. Because you're going to go home, you're going to go over this word, okay? So when you enforce everything that Jesus has done on the cross, you enforce that Calvary and everything that God has done. You enforce what the blood of Jesus has done. You are not fighting the enemy that's, that's won, but you've been fighting an enemy that's already defeated. You are fighting the good fight of faith and appointing, appropriating the spoils of Calvary and the victory of the cross. So here's what the enemy hates. 
Do you know what he hates? He hates a kingdom advancer. Oh, yeah. Okay? Wow. Have you seen how in the church does not move in a power and does not move in a spirit, there, there's no real threat or attack over that church. Have you seen that when the church starts to move in Holy Spirit, glory starts to come, healing, miracles. What did Jesus say? He said the greater things you shall do. Amen. Who? The greater things. Say it with me. The greater things you shall do. We shall do the greatest things. That's how we were supposed to move. And what is it now? What are the timeline? What are the time? What are the timeline? What is the timeline that you are in? We're in the timeline of the outpouring of the greater glory of God, which means that we are appropriating and enforcing everything God has done for us on the cross that Jesus has done for us. That we continually walk in that victory. You know what's wrong with us today? We always giving the enemy the upper hand. Wow. We use our own words, our own attacks, and our own thoughts for the enemy to come and use against us. Because we're walking as the defeated. Because we're walking with not the tools that the God has given us. Because we don't want to use the blood. We don't want to appropriate the blood. We don't want to do those things. You know why? We're tired, we're worn out, and we just want to do. Mm. Let me tell you, frankly, the wealth, the breakthrough, the position, is for the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Like mom says, if you want your deliverance to do the Macarena, you won't get it. <laughs> because deliverance comes because you are a kingdom advancer. So let's catch that. It says that one thing that the enemy hates, he will come against you, is because you are a kingdom advancer. And I'm just going to add something else. There's three levels that the enemy will come and attack you. There's an enemy will come and tempt you. The temptation will come from your own hidden desire. So if you've got a problem with women, guess what? Women will be walking past you all the time because they'll be tempting you. If you have a problem with um, food, <laughs> that day that you said, Lord, I'm going to fast today. <laughs> guess what? All the cakes is going to come to your office. People are going to be, people, people will probably even want to buy you supper because that's how the enemy likes to tempt. But once the level of temptation is over and you move, now you become a real threat to the enemy. Oh boy. Now it's talking about real, real fight and argument. Then he comes to persecute you. Wow. And he will persecute, and when he comes to persecute you, you must understand, you become a real threat to the enemy. Wow. Okay? So when the persecution comes, do you know what you do? You rejoice. Wow. Because you know why? Because you know that you become a threat. Hallelujah. And we have said once the persecution is over and they've tried to drag you through the mud, and now we're talking about souls, we're talking about harvest, we're talking about wealth, we're talking about position, we're talking about deliverance. Now you're moving, now you're now, now, now we're talking about acts. We're talking the 12 apostles, we're talking about Paul, how they moved when they used to go into the prison, the prison. But when that happens, the next level is accusation. Oh, the enemy comes to accuse you and say, but you're not a good mother. You, really, you have not been a good mother my entire life. Oh, and he will use the people that love you the most wow. to accuse you. Wow. And the thing is, is that accusation will take you out of your call or is he going to position you and you oh. say, Lord, I am blessed. I rejoice when I'm accused. And I say, bless those that accuse me because I am going to walk in the victory of the Calvary of Christ. And I just think that there's an accusation against you. And I break that accusation right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And every word that has been said against you, slander, uh, uh, lies, misrepresentation, that they try to, to cut away your reputation, I just break that level of accusation right now in the name of Jesus. So what he doesn't want, he doesn't want you to be an influencer, he doesn't want you to be in your mountain of influence, he doesn't want you to have opportunities to expand, he doesn't want you to have the wealth, he doesn't want you to get in a place of headship in every area of your life, he doesn't want you to be in a kingdom position, he doesn't want you to take back rightfully what belongs to you, what God has given you, and what you possess. Yeah. 
sword. And when he goes forth, it's like a sharp arrow sword. It cuts asunder bone and marrow. So we fight in the good fight of faith to take possession of everything that God has already given you. And I felt that. Did you feel that? Yes. Did you feel those things? Amen. Do you feel how powerful the word of God is when we take back everything? Now, Nehemiah was facing a situation. The walls had been torn down. The gates of the city had been burnt. I can guarantee you, a lot of you are feeling that way. You are in a war, that this war has been lasted for so long, and you keep saying to me, I'm not right. Or you're saying it's my city. My city's not right. Or you're saying it's the government. The government's not right. If the government can just come into a position, I'll be, I'll be okay. But you see, warfare, I mean warfare. And the old man said that the city had been burned and the gates had been burned. And he feels that God has given him an assignment. Has God given you an assignment that you haven't been able to perform? He's been assigned to rebuild the walls. The Jews had attempted this for over 90 years. But what Nehemiah does, he rebuilds his walls in just 52 days. Yeah. Nehemiah shows us to rebuild and come into this place where we possess, last week we did the possessing of the inheritance, yes. walking into relation with blessings. And now once you possess the inheritance, you walk into a relationship, then there's one thing you've got to do. You've got to rise up and build the kingdom of God. Wow. And that's what we're speaking about today. Now one thing as well that is in this word that I declared was if the Jews attempted to do this thing in 90 days, but Nehemiah was able to do it in 52 days. Wow. So if you're in your call and your position that God has placed you in rightfully, there will be an acceleration. Yes. So I release acceleration over you right now in the name of Jesus that whatever plan and assignment that God has released over you will come to pass supernaturally because God has declared and it shall come to pass. So let's read the word of God. Nehemiah 2, 17 to 19 said, we're going to pray up in the word. Then I said to them, you see the distress that we are in. How Jerusalem lies waste, waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. Also I told them, the hand of God has been good upon me. Also the king's word that had been spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. And then they set their hands to do good work. But when Sambala the Horonite, Tobiah the Ammonite official, and Geshem the Arab heard of it, they laughed at despised us and said, what is this thing that you are doing? Will you rebel against the king? The minute they said, the minute the people said, let us rise up and do this good work and stretch their hands, they take an active stand against the enemy. These are the three primary enemies to the kingdom of God, but I want to add a fourth one. Those spirits still operate in us today and in the world. Sanbalad represents your adversary or Satan. Tobiah represents the carnal mind and Geshem represents the world system. Sambala, if you're taking notes, means in Hebrew, who strengthens the army, loudened army, muzzled, hatred, hatred is secret, a secret army. Sambala is a Horonite. He is a governor, a principality. Wow. He desires to keep us subdued. So he can make further demands on us. Now I want you to see the spirit. Because if you see the spirit, you will recognize yeah. that there's some things that match these things. That it's operating in our world, in our country, in South Africa today. In the spirit realm. So he makes further demands on us. He says taxes, more penalties, more uh, petrol increases. I want the people to be subdued. I want the people to be oppressed. Why doesn't he want them like to come in? Because he knows that when Nehemiah comes in, Nehemiah comes in, he rises up and advances and pulls the kingdom of God. So what does he attempt to do? It's a spirit thing. He attempts to oppress and suppress them. The enemy wants to keep you oppressed. The enemy wants to tax you. If he can oppress you, he can tax you and suppress you. The enemy wants to think that he's, he has power, he has authority over you. There's, you know, there's no fight. I can't go against 
um, the government I can't go against what they say they say they stand with Palestine and I'm afraid I can't stand with anybody else and I can't do anything and I'm oppressed and I'm suppressed and um, I'm powerless I just gotta go with the flow whatever the, the government is saying I gotta go you know whatever they say is happening I gotta go they say load shedding stage 6 I gotta go with the load shedding I'm being suppressed oppressed and it makes us subdued. So the enemy gives the authority of Samuel, if you understand this, the enemy wants you to think he has power. He wants you to think he can suppress you and oppress you. But he cannot. Because the only legal right and authority that's on this earth is Jesus. Amen. It's your heavenly father. He's the one that has authority. He's the one that can that can uh, uh, release and increase, okay? So that's the spirit. Now these spirits that represent Samuel are also operate in a person, they operate in a principality, and they also can operate in a governmental, in a governmental, gov governor kind of authority, okay? So Samuel sends letters to Nehemiah. And there's a thing that Nehemiah does. He sends a letter back to Samuel. Amen. And that letter represents the word of God. And that word of God stops that force, that governing force and that authority. So if you're being out of the word of God, then I can guarantee you are being suppressed, oppressed, and you feel defeated. But that's what this principality of Sanballat does. Now let's go into the second one, Tobiah. And I'm going to round up quickly because we don't, I want to quickly go through this because I don't want to lose because this is a bit of teaching, okay? Tobiah was an Ammonite. In Hebrew, Ammonite means tribal, inbred, a flock, to overshadow by hurtling and to become dumb. Tobiah is a terrorist spirit. It wants to incite fear and threats. Tobiah is an Ammonite. It has a Jewish name, but it's, it represents a mask of religion. So it's the carnal mind that can become very dangerous. Carnal means that I'm saved, but I'm led by the flesh and my senses, what I see and what I hear. Tuvaya is the atomy, epitome of religion. Why we often still see a great move of God? Why? Because we deny it. The great move comes upon us and we're ready. The harvest is about to come in and the word of God says, don't say it four months because I see that harvest is ripening and we gotta go and we gotta run and we gotta get in. What happens? Everything stops. We come into this great movement, this great harvest, and the Spirit of God is moving. People are crying and everybody wants to know how can they get saved. And it stops because the Spirit of Tobiah comes in. And the Spirit of Tobiah often operates in the church. Tobiah is a religion, it's a spirit that says, I seek to control you and deny the move of God. Yeah. The carnal mind also is a mind that serves Satan. A carnal mind it uses the senses, so they see things and they move in the in, in the in the seeing things. And I want you to look at these spirits to uh, Sabala, Tobiah, and ask yourself, has anybody or am I or anybody that I know operate in because we've got to deliver ourselves, we've got to deliver our, our church from the operating in these spirits. Now, Tobiah was, um, Tobiah, yes, Tobiah was a terrorist spirit that wanted to incite fear and threats. Tobiah was the Ammonite. The Bible refers to both Moabites and Ammonites. Now, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. This represents Lot's sons. Moab and Amon. They were both born of incest with uh, Lot's daughters. As a result of the ancestral relationship between Lot and his daughters, what they represent wow. is, and they mean in Hebrew is, they came in the wrong way. They represent the flesh. They refuse to serve and they exist to curse. They will even hire someone to curse you. Wow. And that refers to Nehemiah 13.1. Carnal means, I want to give you a meaning of carnal. Carnal means relating to or given to crude bodily pressures, appetites such as gluttony and other carnal activities. Mm -hmm. Remember when I said crucify the flesh? Yeah. Let the flesh 
there. Tobiah was one that was operating, and I want to go deeper, and I never put the scripture on here, but I want to tell you something, and I want you to go back and look at the word. Tobiah is in the house of God. He speaks to one of the priests, I think his name was Elisha, and convinces Elisha to use the rooms in the, in the temple for business. Oh, wow. So where they were supposed to store the incense and the incense and all of those things, he convinces, I think he was with buddies with, you know, asked to be the priest. And he convinces him, we're not going to store the incense and the offering and the time and everything there. I'm going to use the storeroom for business. Wow. Has Tobiah been in our church? Has Tobiah stopped the great move of God? Has Tobiah tried to operate in Carmel? That's why I said, no, 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 no. We can't have the people all on the floor. No, 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 no. We can't have this worship going over 20 minutes. No, 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 no. We have a 7 o'clock service. We have an 8 o'clock service. We have a 9 o'clock service. No, no, no. Deliverance. No, 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 no. Let it go. And then, you know, let it pray. One day, God will set you free. <laughs> Come to me. To me. One day, God will set you free. No. The word of God is very clear. The word of God, you shall declare things, you shall be established. You pick it up, you decree, you take the royal decree, you take the plan line. The Lord is saying, Nathan, where have you been? Look at Tobiah. He's been sitting in the church. He's been building your storerooms for business. Wow. Where was Nathan? Where was Nehemiah? These three strong men that I'm going to tell you the fourth have taken parts of the city. Who knows if they're operating in Israel? Mm. Romans 8, 6 says, The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the, gov- the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Why is it important to identify Sambalai and Tobiah and Geshem? Because carnal thinking causes you to enable satanic forces working through your sensual perception in order to defeat your faith. Faith never makes sense to a carnal mind. You know that we've been prophesying such powerful words. People often ask me, why haven't I come into my word? Why haven't I been able to come into my position and my call? And yes, the signs, the process, and the character, often it's carnality that's keeping you from your position, your advancement, because this is what the Word of God says. The mind governed by the flesh is dead, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. And one of the fruits of operating in the kingdom of God is peace. Peace means nothing. Shalom means nothing missing, nothing broken. And if that is missing in your life, then you need to ask yourself, am I operating in the flesh or am I operating in the spirit? Faith tells us that the mantle that we get from Elijah, we push that and we watch that and the water starts to open. Faith doesn't make sense to the carnal mind. Faith says that that thing when I touch the garment of Jesus, he heals me. Faith says that my finances is about to be be, uh, taken into another level. That everything that the enemy came to rob, sin and destroy is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Never lie the sons the ploy. He knows that they want to hurt him. And now these three men come together and they say, you know the story, I'm not going to go too much into scripture, but he says that he wants to meet with them, with him. A, A portrayal of peace of wanting peace, of saying, you know, a treaty, that's just neat. And Nehemiah discerns this ploy. He knows they want to hurt him, possibly even kill him. So he declines. Four times they send him this message. Four times he says no. The fifth time, Samuel and Gashem and send Nehemiah the same message via Korea, along with the unsealed letter. In it, they accuse, that I was speaking about earlier, they accuse Nehemiah of inciting a revolution and trying to set himself up as king. Sambala states that Geshem can confirm these charges because they are true. Geshem in Hebrew means to shower violently or a heavy downpour. It also represents a type of wall system. 
There is a kingdom of God and then there is world's way and the king, Satan's way of doing things. So Yeshua means shallow bank, your heavy down flow. In the kingdom of God, there are certain ways that we do things. What do we do in the kingdom of God? We walk in obedience. We are generous. We are fruitful. We operate at a state level. We operate in, f- in flesh. Oh, my time is gone. But what do we do in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, we operate in flesh. We operate in carnality. We operate with no faith. We operate always scared and coming up to the threats of the enemy. So what does that, what does that spirit do? It makes you afraid. It makes you doubt. It makes you unbelief. And it makes you scared. So you, even though God is telling you to advance, because the kingdom of God has risen upon you, you become afraid. So today we're going to break off those spirits. Can okay? guess you? Geshem comes from Ishma, the bloodline of Ishma. Geshem is Arabian. Okay, that's where he comes from. He's a descendant of Ishma. Colossians 2 8 says, See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy, empty deception, according to the tradition of men, according to elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. Geshem also represents the, that the world thinking also represents a world system and also represents a, a, a governor or in my life I need to look and examine my life and see does, does my life look more like the kingdom of God or does it look more like the world's way of doing things do I operate in the world's way of doing things or do I operate in the kingdom of God you can only let the kingdom of God rise upon you if you have something in commonality with the kingdom of God. If you don't, then you operate in Satan's kingdom and these spirits have access. Lastly, there's a fourth one that I want to speak to you about. It's a false prophet called Nadiah. Wow. She is a false prophet who assisted to buy and sell the Sanhala against the Jews by being bribed by them. So she took money from them and she was a joint force. Now we've often heard that the enemies of Nehemiah are sent to uh, Tobiah and Geshem. But nobody ever mentions the Dyer. But the Dyer was a false prophet that was being paid wow. by these same entities. Wow. Now, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, we throw down the spirit of the Dyer. Yes. Operating in our government, yes. operating in the nation, yes. operating in the city of Durban, yes. operating in parliament right now, yes. Jesus. and we command and we declare that that spirit of Nadia has to come down and cancel and throw down that spirit of Nadia right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. The word of God says when we find the strong man and we tie up the strong man, then the plunder belongs to the nation. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we declare that Goliath is bound up and thrown down in the name of Jesus. So she tried to stir up discontent. When I was doing this work, the Lord said to me that some of you have come up against the spirit of Goliath. It's been operating in your workplace. It's been operating in your family. She works by bribing people. She entices. Okay? She, 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 she stirs up discontent. And uh, she starts to stir up and she, she's like, I believe that she was the one that was bringing these three men together. Mm-hmm. And they came and she was kind of directing them, you know, what to do in the spirit realm. Mm-hmm. Because she, Nadia means Jehovah, or it's Jehovah revealed. So, so we could have thought that she was close to God, mm-hmm. but she was operating under a false prophet spirit and a false prophet. Now before I got, went into this word, and I know my time is almost up, before I went into this word, the Lord told me that he's taking the false prophet in this nation. Down. And the false Down. prophet in the kingdom of God, yes. and you see they rise up, and he's taking those spirits, and he's throwing them down. Yes. And I'm talking about those that operate in water spirits, yes. that operate in a false dimension, that operate in Python, that operate as a Jezebelic spirit, God is throwing down those spirits in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now the opposition in the 
Nehemiah, and we're almost done. The opposition in Nehemiah took form in six different ways. You promised guys, you took notes, right? These are the three spirits, four spirits. And I guarantee you, especially, uh, uh, I guarantee you that some of these spirits, especially the mask of religion, has been operating in our bloodline, has been operating in our church, has been operating in our city. The opposition in Nehemiah took form in six ways. Grief, mockery, rapid indignation, fighting, craftiness, cunningness, manipulative behavior, compromise. What is the thing that you are doing that they didn't care for the last 90 years what they were doing? But as soon as Nehemiah stirred up the people, all of a sudden they cared that they, what they were doing. And they said, what is this thing that you are doing? Wow. I want to say, if you've been in a place of compromise, and if you compromise the call and the position of God, today is the day when we do the activation and the declaration that you're going to come back into the kingdom of God. Amen. Because no longer we're going to allow Sandalite, Tobiah, Geshem, and Nodiah to operate in the church, in the body of Christ, in the city, in the nation on our watch. Amen. Because we are what? We are the never hires. Now these three men were the opponents to the vision of God. You know what's about to come? You know what's about to take place? We go into the Acts 4, where, 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 where they wanted to imprison the move of God. Listen to me while I'm saying carefully, because I'm telling you. They wanted to imprison the move, the next move of God. Acts 4 31 says, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all full with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God boldly. That is the place that we are going into. These are the enemies to the vision and the kingdom of God. It's the enemies to where God is taking us to. It's the enemies to the portion, inheritance, and memorial. Nehemiah 2.20 says, I answered them by saying, I answered them by saying, the God of heaven will give us success. We are his servants. We will start rebuilding. But as for you, you will have no share in Jerusalem or any claim or historic rights. When I, when I prayed to the Lord and I asked him, why can't the church stand in Israel? And I said to the Lord, show me why the children are dying in Gaza. And I had a dream and I had a vision. And then God gave me this and he said, those that do not stand in Israel. But as for you, you have no shame in Jerusalem. Wow. Or any claim or historic right to you. Did you see what was happening? Look at the spirits. Tell me why the Christians don't stand in Israel. Has Tobiah, Samala, Tobiah will never stand in Israel. No. Because it's a mask of religion. It's a fake. It thinks that it operates in the kingdom of God, wow. but it doesn't. Wow. And we need to have one thing that Nehemiah had was discernment. Amen. Hallelujah. God doesn't need perfection. He doesn't need fanciness. He needs your availability and he needs your decision to extend and build the kingdom of God. Purpose is not a position. It's a place that you live in with God. Always keep your hand to purpose, and that's what Nehemiah was doing. A person that knows their purpose and moves in their purpose, God will always back you up. These are the four spirits that are opponents to a person that walks out their purpose. Now we're going to do a declaration activation. Uh, uh, we're going to go into operate, we're going to close up the service, but I just want you to remember. And think about these spirits and how could they have been affecting you or operating in your bloodline. I want you to also do an examination. Have you been in a place of compromise and have you been in a place where you've um, been in carnality and not being in the flesh? We're going to just repent on that and break it off right now and then we're going to go into tithes and blessings. Can I just get a round of applause? How is that revelation? I want everybody to wake up. You know why? This is not bad news, guys. This is good news. Amen. You know why? Because when you know the enemy 
enemies that are coming against you to extend the kingdom of God. That means that you have vision. You know what I was going to do today? I was supposed to dress up in army uniform. And I was supposed to give everybody, you know, some kind of army. Because I want to say to you that God is establishing an army of God and a kingdom of God as we move. But he wants to bring in the house of souls. He wants you to declare the word of God boldly. He wants you to be able to get your, your, your house in order. And he wants to be in priority because he wants you to put him first. Okay, so we declare that right now in the name of Jesus that we cancel all distractions, places that we have not. Have a very, very, very powerful, 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 powerful words. Are you ready for that deliverance, guys? Yes. And you know, now you know the warfare that you've been in. And you see how sneaky the enemy is. But one word from God is going to fix up everything. So today, uh, repeat after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. We, thank you we thank you for your revelation. And today, we will rise up and build the kingdom of God. And today, we renounce and we throw down the giants in the nation and in my life of Goshen, Sambalat, Tobias, and Odiah. Right now, in the nation of South Africa, in my life, in my bloodline, in my city, in my government, all the way to Adam, we renounce, we break agreements, we break covenants, and we declare today that those giants are thrown down in our house, in the body of Christ, we take authority and we say it is defeated. In the name of Jesus. And if you have received that now, say amen. amen. And let's give God a praise offering. Can you feel that deliverance? We were fasting and praying for Israel. And you know, these giants came, we came head to head, right, Tashi? We came head to head, head to head with these giants. And we were bumping and knocking heads. And now, some of you that are builders and you know called to construct and build, if you've been going head to head, especially if you're working in governmental organizations, you'll be bumping head to head. But now you know that you're set free. Um, I just, there's somebody here, there's two or three people here um, that are, before we do the, I, I just wanna, I just wanna, it's a bloodline, bloodline, right? Um, bloodline that is exactly on the nail, okay? Again, delivered, right? I just want somebody who is struggling with uh, coming from a house, uh, not resigned from the house, but you're struggling with marine spirits and spirits, water spirits, which is so in key with Africa, favorite spirits of the false prophets. Now that we've thrown down the false prophet, I just want to renounce of you. Are you ready to renounce water spirits and python spirits, okay? Are you ready to do that? Hey, you may have been struggling with it. That you, you may have come in, you may be not in a church that has false prophets or marine spirits, but you may be received from a false prophet a word. And when you receive a false prophet a word, and that spirit, the python, has access to coming to you because you come into agreement. And maybe that's why you worry. And stop running from false prophet to false prophet. Jesus is the way that you, and he is a God of prophecy. So you can get the word. Since Jesus came, you can get the word directly from the throne room. Amen? And I'm sure in this house he spoke to every single one of you. Because he wants to have a direct, intimate relationship. You don't need a man. You need the God, Amen. the divinity of Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. So Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, and for you online, Panama and Dublin and um, the people of the, the nations, uh, come, let's do this thing, okay? Because it's time for you to be set free. And um, Lord, Lord Jesus, I renounce water spirits, the spirit of Rahab, um, and I renounce Python, uh, according to Acts 16, 16. 
seen. I break agreements. I break the altar. I break covenants. And every negative word that has been spoken over me over four, by false prophets, I renounce all those negative words. And I receive and restore my destiny, my calling, my appointments, my breakthrough, my blessings, and a coming to a new covenant. With you, Christ Jesus. There's a purity in the house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You know, um, I had somebody say, stop following uh, false prophets because it can cause you damnation. Do you understand? And I respond. It's so accurate. It's something that I'm not going to preach. <laughs> okay, because he's probably called to that. Because, you know, I believe it's a time where God is exposing false prophets. False prophets are leading nations astray. And the word damnation and heresy is accurate. And even though revival is being accused of that, we have to have discernment to know. And the one thing you'll know about false prophets, money, python, you tangled up, you can't breathe at night, and for um, uh, uh, water spirits, serious pain in your spine and your neck. If you're having those problems in your legs, you come in agreement. Run. Okay, that's that's the word. Okay, run. You feel it, gentlemen, right? Yeah. Okay, let's move. We let's do our blessings. All right. So you're um, in this house. We are a mature church, and we understand in this house everybody tithes, and 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 we don't beg because we believe the kingdom of God. So we tithe, and we give offerings, and we run to bless. Because we know the word of God, we want to speak into the word of God. So keep your, your time, your offering, your seed ready, and let us get ready to sow. Okay? We that stand with Israel. Amen? Hallelujah. Yeah. Did you receive that, guys? Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready to go and take and possess? Amen? Yeah. The, the gates of the city in the name of Jesus. This is my time. This is my time. My seed and my offering. My seed and my offering. It will do what God says it will do. It will do what God says it will do. It will be used to build the kingdom of God. The windows of heaven is open over me and my house. And overflowing blessings have been released. And I don't have any room to contain it. In the name of Jesus. I am the seed of Abraham. And the oath that God swore to him is mine. Therefore, therefore, I release my tithe, my seed, and my offering into fertile soil. King Jesus' house of prayer. God is increasing my testimony to share and bring glory to God. Amen. Amen. We declare today, we declare today. I'm going to just release this blessing over you. You don't have to repeat over uh, right. Now for the guys who are online, you can go to King Jesus, www.kingjesushop.org and the bank details are there. I mean, we know we do have members online and if you are an online member and you're not part of the church, you're welcome to. So otherwise, your time goes to your house and your seed and your offering can come to King Jesus' house of prayer, okay? So we declare increase over over you and your and your storehouse. We call for jobs with good pay, benefits, increases, and bonuses. God will give you a place of employment where you fit in and you have a blessed future. And we've seen those testimonies have come forth in this house. Amen. Hallelujah. I especially bless business people that God will give you um, staff that are dependable. And in, and and I declare the Holy Spirit is opening your eyes. And you see that revelatory word. And we declare a new level of revelation that is opening your eyes of revelation, understanding, and discernment. I declare today over you and your house divine protection of acts of violence, hijacking, robbery, scams, bad weather, accidents, sickness, disease. In the name of Jesus. We declare protection from storms in the name of Jesus. King Jesus' house of prayer is a, is, a, is a house that prays for Israel. 
that stands with Israel, that blesses Israel, sows into Israel, and prays for the peace of Jerusalem. So do we declare today, not only because Israel is in war, but we've been doing this from the time that this house was established. Hallelujah. So for, for God for such a time as this, in this house. Amen. So today we declare that God is a hand around Israel. And he is the glory inside of Israel. So we declare today that the enemies of Israel that have mocked and loved Israel through this time that God is giving Israel power, authority, victory over the enemies and all the nations around Israel that have laughed at Israel according to the word of God we declare today that all in Aliyah, all the people that are all over the nation according to Ezekiel 37 that they will go back on the land and that Israel shall be blessed and multiplied, that the people shall be saved in Israel, that the people in Gaza that God loves will be blessed and will be, will be saved and come to know the Messiah. We declare today that the neighbors around Israel shall have encounters with Jesus, that the soldiers will see Jesus and be saved. We declare today, harvest time, harvest time, harvest time for the Middle East, harvest time, harvest time, revival, that they will be supernaturally saved and encounter Israel. We declare finances as we increase our soul, our sowing into Israel, that Aliyah, 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 that once more the children from all over the world will go back and the children will be blessed Blessed, multiply. Come, behold, he's come.